When you first open an image inside of Photoshop, what does it do? If you have a DSLR, it actually opens it up in Camera Raw. Let me show you. I'm going to load an image from the computer. I'm going to drag it into the window and simply let go. Now the first thing that you'll notice, it has some buttons over here and it sliders down there. What do they all do? You move a bunch of things around and you get very confused very quickly and you give up. This is going to solve all that. Camera Raw is incredibly easy to use. In fact, after I teach my students how to use it, they don't even want Photoshop anymore. It's kind of funny. We're not going to go in depth into Camera Raw today, but I will show you how to take an image from the computer through Camera Raw into Photoshop. Well, it's not that hard at all. It does have a bunch of different palettes and sliders and things all over the place, but I'm going to simplify this for you. All you need to know is right here. Now let me try and break this down for you. We have a bunch of different sliders here, but let's start with whites. I'm sure you can pretty much figure out what this one does. It makes the whites whiter and the whites darker. So basically you're either going to push the blowouts or you're going to gray things up. More often than not, I don't even touch the whites because I don't want it to gray out anything. So I usually leave it set to zero. Occasionally I might move it, but usually not. Blacks is once again the obvious. It either makes the blacks darker or it makes the blacks lighter. Now I will use that one, but I'll often use it in conjunction with shadows. Shadows is an absolute black. It's more of the dark gray areas. And so those will get darker and those will get lighter. So when used in conjunction with blacks, which I'll show you in a second, it'll enhance the contrast but still open up and show a lot of detail. And the other one we have here is highlights. Once again, it's not the whites, but it's not the mid grays either. It's a light gray. So if I take the highlights and push it, it makes the light grays whiter or it makes the white grays darker. There is a contrast, however, I don't use contrast because contrast just simply makes things pushed in equal ends. So that means that if I go the contrast more, it makes the darks darker and the whites blown out. And that's not what I want at all. I want individual control of the lights and the darks but not the equal lack of control that happens with contrast. So I'll usually leave that one at zero. Now that leaves us exposure. Now what I'm about to say isn't absolutely true, but in terms it makes sense. If the black is black and the white is white, and the shadow is dark gray and the highlights are light gray, then the only way that we can actually grab the midtones is with exposure. Now that's not absolutely true because the exposure will brighten everything and it will darken everything. However, when used in conjunction with these other settings, you are allowed to move the midtones and then adjust your highlights and shadows to compensate for that on the outer sides of it. So let me give you an example of how this tends to work. If I take these shadows and I open them up, notice how much detail comes back into this image. Now I don't want to make it quite this bright, but you get the idea. Now because I made it brighter, that usually flattens out the blacks. So simply take the blacks and push it in the other direction. See that? Now I can also take the highlights and brighten those up as well. And now we've added some contrast within the image. This is before and this is after. Before and after. It just opened it up a little bit more inside of these darker areas. Below that we have something called clarity which I don't really worry too much about, but essentially what it does is it adds contrast and sharpening. So for right now, don't even worry about it. Down here we have vibrance and saturation. Now by definition, vibrance will enhance the weakest colors and saturation enhances all colors. So if you look at what it does, if I move up vibrance, well, it got some of the colors, but not all of the colors. It's not nearly as bad as it could be. However, when you take the saturation and push it, everything tends to go nuclear. However, my own personal definition is that vibrance pushes the cools and saturation pushes the warms. So let me show you. If I take vibrance, what's the first set of colors that go? Well, they're the blues. This is what happens with vibrance. If you go high enough, eventually it starts grabbing the warms and the reds and everything else, but at a smaller degree, it's grabbing the cools. Now with saturation, the first thing that it grabs is what? The warms. You know, the oranges, the reds, the yellows. So the saturation seems to grab the warms first, then it grabs the cools secondary. Eventually everything goes nuclear.
but basically my definition within a controlled range is vibrance is cools, saturation is warms. And knowing that, in this case, we want to bring the warms forward, but we want to push the cools back. So what I'll actually do is take the vibrance and push it back, which will desaturate the blue skies and even the green bushes. However, when I boost up the saturation, it pushes the color back into the bushes and it pushes color into the reds. So now I've actually taken the image and I brought the foreground forward and pushed the background back. And if you'd like to see what I've done overall, this is before and after, before and after. And what's interesting about this is, is that this image looked pretty good before. There really wasn't anything wrong with it, but after you see a few simple sliders, suddenly all this color and detail comes out and I really haven't even done anything yet. I mean, other than my explaining this to you, moving these sliders around would take me about five to 10 seconds. Really, it's that quick and that easy. And that's why you should be using the raw processor. Now, if I want to take this image and open it up inside of Photoshop, I simply click open image. If I want to save this image, I would click save image. And then I can save it as a TIFF or a JPEG or a Photoshop document. Or if I simply want to save the settings but not actually do anything with the image, then I would just click done. And then Camera Raw will save those settings so the next time I launch this file, it will know what sliders I've already moved around. However, before actually opening up inside of Photoshop with this open image button, be sure to notice this blue area down here. It's something very easily missed, but if you click on it, it's going to open up a dialog box. And it's within this dialog box that you can actually change settings like the color space, the color depth, and even the size of the image. In this case, I have it resized to open up as a three megapixel image simply because I teach classes on this computer. If I were doing this for real, I would turn that off and then it's going to open it up as, as a full size image. For me, in this particular case, I just leave that on. When it comes to color spaces and color depth, that's the type of thing that I teach in my basic one course not something we're going to talk about today. I'm simply showing you that this dialog box exists within this blue menu down here. Now there's one more thing I'm gonna teach you before this video is over. I'm gonna click done, and then I'm going to open up an image that has a color cast problem. When I take this image and drag and drop it into Photoshop, it has this blue cast to it. Simply what I can do is click this eyedropper here, which says white balance tool, and I'm gonna click anywhere that I think there is a neutral. It doesn't mean white, it doesn't mean 30% gray, it's anything that you think should just be neutral, doesn't care. I can click over here, if that's the neutral, then it's gonna make it neutral. It could be inside of the blacks, it's gonna change it, but that could be your neutral, it doesn't really matter. Whatever helps the image is really our goal here. In this case, I'm gonna click on the white background, and that's going to help it, but it may not be what we want. So what we can do is come over here to this area here of temperature and tint. This is fairly easy to understand. With the temperature on the top, you make the wide swings. You're either going to make the color of the image blue, cools, or orange, yellow, warms. Okay, so here it goes cool, here it goes warm. All right, and then you use this one down here to fine tune that color. If you go one way, it goes more yellows and eventually greens. If you go the other way, it goes pinks and magentas. And if you don't like anything that you did, then you can change the white balance back to as shot. So once again, we click on the eyedropper, we click on the white balance, we adjust the temperature to be warmer or cooler, we adjust the tint to be greener or more magenta. And when you do take the time to balance out the rest of this image to open up the highlights and the whites, and the blacks and the shadows. Now it's much easier to decide which way to swing this temperature color. Every image is different. Sometimes you want to do color first, other times you want to do the tonal range first. Completely up to you. This ends my relatively quick tutorial on Camera Raw, but it does show you how to make some very quick changes to your images and import them into Photoshop using the open image button. If you do want to learn more about Camera Raw, I do teach it in depth inside of my Photoshop Basic One course, designed to make you a better photo retoucher.